really the seed growing bait, and, and it really is isn't it, by the soil. You can you can become really great as a human being in mm -hmm. lousy soil, but it's sure hard. It's hard to become good in good soil. But can be modified too. I'm sorry. The seed can be modified too. Well, you modify it, right? That's true. Yes. So, so, so education is the genetic modification. Monsanto Academy. Oops. You say that in Minnesota. What do you think? Okay. Good. Good. Who's next? Nope. <laughs> you all. Yes. Come on. Who went with this uh, metaphor? Such a battleship. A battleship. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> uh, education is like a battleship because it provides a challenge for imparting the knowledge in the right way to the children. Yes. Keep you safe. It keep you safe. Good. It keeps you safe. It keeps you safe. It's, it's more like the captain of the ship would be the teachers, mm -hmm. and the captain can take the ship. What? Guide you. Guide. Guide you the right way or the wrong way. Yes, guidance, good. And we can provide the fireworks for the Cuba. Right, right. Good, that's good. There, there's a way, that, there's a way that, that public education in America today is like, is like a battleship too, in fact, a fleet of battleships, because I just read that in the U.S. Navy now, there are more admirals than ships. And I thought, wow, that makes sense. Of course you'd have more admirals than ships, just like in the schools. <laughs> Talk about efficient. Somebody's got to be petitioning the government for more money. So good. But yours is much more honorable than mine. So thank you. What group's next? There's that group over there that was all ready to go and then I ripped it away from them. Should we send it back over there? You guys okay over there? I know, I know. Trying to toughen you up. Tall drink of water that feeds the soul and is necessary for life. Right. I like that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you a writer? Yeah. Good. Wow. Keep writing. Good. What group's next? Well, who, what group hasn't gone yet? Raise your hand. Over there, that group's right. Do you want to call on that group? And this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm thinking. We have two at the same table, so this is getting really linear. Oh, it's the. Oh, dear. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe you guys should have an arm wrestle. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, then I'm all right. You, you, you all can go now, all right. and then we'll go over here somewhere. All right. Education is. See if I read my handwriting. Wait a minute, is this yours? This is mine. Oh, you can't tell us. Somebody else in the group has to tell us yours. Oh, you mean they have to read my handwriting? Yes. I'll, well, unless they can I'll remember. You, I'll tell you what it was. Okay. You have to explain it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. No, you have to explain it. No shirking. Sure, I'll, I'll try. You, you correct me when I miss it. All right. So all right. it's a gold cover, or golden, gold wrapped, chocolate covered, caramel filled, Ooh. freshly picked apple. Ooh. Ooh. Encasing the seeds with your knowledge. Encasing the seeds with your knowledge. Are you a writer too? <laughs> Today. All right. <laughs> Good New job. Good. So the gold was the preciousness of it. Mm. The wow. chocolate and the caramel was, you know, they, sweet. They were of the opinion that education is always pleasant. I was, I differed on that a little bit, but you know, apples are sour. Yeah, sometimes you get a little bitter in there, but you know, it's, it leads to uh, the seeds of knowledge. Or according, you have to be careful not to bite them because they can. All right. Crack your teeth. That's right. Good. So it's got walnuts around it. Well, it's got the seeds inside. Right. Which are cancer, are, uh, 
poisons. What, what is it? Apple seeds have some poison in them. What is it? Arsenic. Arsenic, yeah, they have arsenic. It's a very small amount. April. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll jam we'll up. Okay. I know. <laughs> All right, good, thank you. That's a good apple. Okay, well, no, no, we can't go there. I can't handle it. So your group is up, right? One of your. Yeah, has anybody ever been perfectly educated? <laughs> anybody ever mastered language completely? You'd have to know every language in the world, all the words and all the forms. Good, good. So there's a circuit, there's a spark, and there's a sky. I love it. Excellent. Thank you. And then over to, are you the last group? Are you the, the privileged few? Or is there, there's a couple groups. Okay. Dan's group? We don't call it that. <laughs> the, group in which we have, the group with which we have punished them for with Dan. The, you guys. Okay. No, you're too close to them. You're up. Education is a telescope that opens up the galaxy, and we think it speaks for itself. Oh, wow. confidence. Okay. I like that. A good metaphor speaks for itself. I agree. Good. A telescope that opens up the galaxy. Okay. And then is is there any? Have I missed anybody else? You? Oh, oh. They went. Didn't you go? I thought you went. I guess just with the concept of spark injury. Spark and uh, uh, injury light. Kind of all those pieces yeah. Okay. Spark and growth yeah. and life. Good. Excellent. So, is it a Christmas tree? Okay. All right. My son can't have a Christmas tree. This education is a is a Christmas tree for somebody who's allergic. <laughs> that's a, that's a child. Boy, that's what I was thinking as a kid. All right. Over over to you all. What what do you have? Never mind, so I can say them both. Okay. Uh, education is an awakening, and education is a mirror. Mm -hmm. An awakening and a mirror. Good. Good. Do they speak for themselves? Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Good. So here's, here's a few that I heard. An awakening and mirror. I remember those. A spark came up a couple of times. A circuit. A lot of water. A lot of water. A lot of water. Yeah. Drinking water, non-drinking water. <laughs> we got some boats. Some wa we got a waterfall, so water moving. Um, we got a building. We got somebody on Mount Everest painting a building. A tea time or something like that. Right? <laughs> Not tea time. Candle. 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 Tea time candle. Um, where, tell me a couple more. Help me remember a couple more. See, a seed, right? Right. right. Chocolate. 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 <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> Are we all talking about the same thing? No, you don't think so. Are we or not? Some people are saying yes, and some people are saying no. Why do you say no? Yes, it's defined differently, but but is it a different thing? In the end, are we are we all? I mean, if it's all if it's different for everybody, can we put every all the kids together in the same school and give it to them? It's a difference, but the ending is the same. Yeah, there's differences and similarities, isn't there? Aren't there? there? There's there's something in the very heart of it that is one thing, but think of how rich a thing it is. To be both chocolate and a river. A chocolate river. A chocolate river. <laughs> <laughs> it's downright Willy Wonka. <laughs> Makes you want to go back to school, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a bit weird. You're really weird. <laughs> How many of you feel like the education you got as a child was well described by these metaphors? 
really <laughs> weird. Yeah. Yeah. When I, if you if it, if it was, I I commend the school and the parents and, and and the teachers. That's just amazing for me. When we talked about school as a kid, we used a really good metaphor almost all the time. We talked about prison, mm -hmm. and and it was an awful lot like prison while you were in. You weren't really allowed to leave. There were bars on the window. Um, occasionally riots. It was a lot of fun. But we, we thought of it as prison. And, and I think we were onto something. We didn't think of it as chocolate rivers, that's for sure. Um, and yet, what a, what a vast thing it is that we're talking about. The, the real heart and soul of education. But here's something I want you to think about. Correct me if I'm wrong. But nobody, not one of you, came up with the metaphor for education is a factory. Did you? Did anybody? It wouldn't necessarily be evil to do so. But, but what do you think captures more of the spirit of education? The things you were talking about are a factory. Now here's the, other, the next question. In modern education, conventional education, the way it's normally done, I don't think they would come right out and say this very often, but the practices, where do most of them come from? Honestly, it's from the factory. The length of class, the bells, the division of labor, everything's about efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. The child is a product, you're on an assembly line, you get on that assembly line in kindergarten, you have specialists who specialize in putting a certain part on that product, and then at the end of 12th grade, you're done, you're assembled, and out you go. Okay. You're measured before you go out. And you're measured constantly, right? Yeah. You're measured constantly. And if you're an outlier, then you have to be dealt with. <laughs> you have to, yeah, you have to be, you have to be renormed. Or something drastic has to be done. You might be an outlier because you're too low on the bell curve or too high on the bell curve. But if you're an outlier, you're a problem. You're, you're hard to teach if you're really smart or if you're really struggling. If you're really good in a given area, if you're really bad in a given area, you struggle. Maybe, maybe you didn't get, maybe you moved from another culture, you moved from city to city or from school to school and in some particular area, the school you used to go to didn't emphasize something and emphasize something else. Now you're in a new school and you're, you're, you're an outlier at both ends of the bell curve in two different classes. You're a problem. That's not what happens on a farm. That's not what happens in, 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 in a community. That's not what happens in real life. People are, people are brought into a community and they're valued for who they are and what they can do. And then they're cultivated. And what I love about the images and the, and the metaphors that you were giving was, frankly, I'm inspired by listening to you talk about what you dream of education being. Now help this school achieve it. Right? Help this school achieve what you want it to achieve because it's rich. And I, and I want you to imagine, just let your imagination run away with you for a moment. Imagine a school committed, top to bottom, day in and day out, to the kind of dream that you're talking about, the kind of dreams that you're talking about. It would be transformative. Most importantly, it would be transformative in each child's life. They'd be healthier. They'd be mentally healthier, soulishly healthier. They'd have a better imagination, they'd be more creative, they'd get along better, they'd be healthier. So they themselves would be transformed. And then everywhere they went, the people around them would be affected by that. They would improve the thinking of the people around them by asking good questions. Which, by the way, is the best way to improve somebody's thinking, is asking good questions. They'd learn how to ask good questions. They would learn how to see beautiful things and appreciate beautiful things. They would learn how to make beautiful things. And if our culture needs one thing more than anything else, that might be it. Dostoevsky in his great novel, The Brothers Karamazov, he says, beauty will save the world. He might be right. He might be right. That might be the only thing that can, that can save the world is beauty. But only if people can make beautiful things. But in our schools in America, and, and, and I think really in, in many worldwide, more and more it's becoming this way. In the arts, our goal is not to make beautiful things. Our goal is to express ourselves. What that self is that we're expressing, we don't really explore that closely. 
but everything's about self-expression. And when it stops being about self-expression, it becomes about um, influencing others. That might mean influencing the way they vote, or it might being, mean influencing the way they feel. So then shock becomes the, the, the goal of art. So much of the New York art scene, especially in the 90s, I think it was a lot worse than now, but so much of the New York art scene was about shock, about affecting a person. That's all you wanted to do. If you, if you were making great art, it was because people were moved by it. What if people don't know what they should be moved by? What if they don't know how to see? Sometimes the artist has to teach the, the person how to see good art. Think of music that way. Music, what's music about for in the, in the pop music industry? It's about, you know, if it's about 60% of it is getting 12 year old girls feeling sentimental, <laughs> and the other 40% of, of, of it is about getting 14 year old boys angry. All right, there's another 10% somewhere in there. Mo most of it, that's what it's about, is, is, is this very low level manipulation taking place. What music ought to be doing is ordering people's souls. It ought to be training them to see and hear beauty. That's what music should be doing. That's the classical tradition. Plato got into that in the Republic Book Four. One of the most amazing passages in all of, of, I guess you'd say philosophy, but I would just call it a book on education, when he talks about beauty. And, he, and it's on page 79 of the Dover edition, but I can't remember where it is in the other ones. But it's book four, and about two paragraphs, Plato describes why it's important that little children, very little children, listen to beautiful music. <laughs> and he says that the reason they need to listen to beautiful music is because it gives them appreciation for beauty and order and harmony. And then when they have that, because they're, they're not rational yet, have you noticed this? <laughs> they're not primarily rational people. They can, they, they, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So when they're six, seven, eight years old, they don't need to hear philosophy explained to them. They need to hear philosophy. They need to hear truth embodied in music, which and truth is orderly. It's harmonious. That's how you. That's one of the ways we know something is true. Is it's harmonious? So, for example, if I say a sentence like, um, "The wall is black," okay, that's false, right? That wall, anyway. That's mm -hmm. false. How do you know that? Because there's not a harmony between my statement and the wall. Or if I say, "I ain't got no fish." That's just confusing, grammatically confusing, because I'm having an argument with myself in front of me. And I always tell the kids, stop arguing with yourself in public. Um, that's what bad grammar causes us to do. But it's contradictory. The relationship is broken. It's a disharmony. Now, what Plato's saying is, if you get accustomed to disharmony when you're little, then later on, when reason comes, you won't welcome her. She'll irritate you. But if you get accustomed to harmony when you're little, then your soul is attuned, he says, attuned to reason when she arrives. That's a powerful metaphor. Attuned to reason. Because reason is beautiful. Isn't that funny? Doctor or Mr. Spock on Star Trek, he wouldn't he wouldn't have talked about music or reason being beautiful. Would he? That's what it is. It's beautiful. As were these metaphors and images that you were coming up with for education. And so what we need to be doing is presenting to our students and to our children beautiful things that will order their souls and harmonize their souls and, and help them, more than anything, help them to believe that a harmony is possible. And then as they take rule, as they take control, governing their own minds, I am indeed a king, why? For I know how to rule myself. Well, if you have a chaotic mind, can you rule yourself? If your own mind is in disharmony, can you rule others? Can you rule yourself? I would say no. And so would Plato. So what we're going to do now is take a break. And we're, we're done. You, you, uh, it's Friday night. You guys are to be...